This is Nick with LogosByNick.com and in this tutorial I'll be demonstrating how you can use Inkscape to give your logo designs a custom text treatment so that they look more like a customized logo rather than a stock font. And if you'd like to learn more about logo design, be sure to check out my Logo Design Academy. It's an 18-part video series where I outline my entire process for designing logos from start to finish. I'll have a link in the description of the video if you want to check that out. So we'll get started here in Inkscape. The first thing we want to do is just set up our document so that we are all working with a similar view. I'm going to come up here to where it says View. I'm going to want Custom selected right here. And then we'll go to Zoom and we will zoom in at 1 to 1. And then I'm going to open up the Fill and Stroke menu with this button right here. Or you could just press Control shift f on the keyboard to open that up. And what I want to do now is generate some text. So I'm going to grab the text tool and I'm going to write on the canvas here. I'm going to use all caps. I'm going to write exact. And the reason I'm using the word exact is just because the way these letters work out. It's, it's, a, good, it's a good example for uh, demonstrating this, this technique, which I'm going to show you here. Now let me change the font. I'm going to change this font up here in the font editor. I'm going to work with... Um, I think Micrograma. You can really use whatever font you'd like, but I just think for this sort of thing, Micrograma works pretty well. But like I said, any Sans font really should work well. Even, even with uh, cursive fonts, it works pretty well. So I'm going to grab this Select tool. I'm going to hold Control and Shift. I'm going to scale this up so that it locks the proportions. And now what I'm going to do is convert this from a text object to a path. So I'll go to Path, Object to Path, and then I'll ungroup the letters over here with the Ungroup button so that they're individual letters like that. Now I'm going to take the opacity and bring that down roughly in half because I'm going, to, I'm going to want to be able to see what's going on as I overlap these letters. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to zoom in on these letters. I'm going to hold control and roll up the mouse wheel a couple of times. And I just want to manually adjust the spacing between these letters, which is otherwise known as kerning. So I'm going to take this first letter right here. I'm going to hold control and just move it left and right. And the reason why I'm holding control is because it locks it onto the horizontal axis like that. So I'm going to move this over to about there. I'm looking at the top tip of this letter E and the top tip of this letter X. I don't want them to touch, but I want them to be pretty close. And then I'm going to hold shift and click on the X. And I'm going to hold control and just move this over as well. I just want to reduce the space between these two letters right here. It's okay if they overlap at the bottom portion here because we're going to we're going to use this letter to make it look like it's going over the letter A here, as you'll see shortly. I'll hold shift, click the letter A, move that over. And the letter C will do the same thing, move that over slightly as well. And that's looking pretty good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start making these letters overlap and underlap each other. Um, let me just move this. Okay, that's pretty good right there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this letter X first, and I'm going to duplicate that by pressing Control D, and I'm going to make this green. Now what I want to do is I want to make this lower left leg of the X look like it's overlapping the letter E here. But in order for that to work, I need to extend this letter E. So I'm going to grab the Nodes tool, which is up here. Click on this letter E. Click and drag over those two nodes and just hold Control and just click and drag these over to the right like that. And that's what I'm looking for right there. So I'm going to take this green duplicate copy. And now I want to open up the Path Effects menu. So we'll go to Path and I'm going to choose Path Effects. And I'm going to click the plus icon to add a new path effect. And the path effect I'm looking for is offset. So I'll click on that. And where it says offset, I'm just going to click that plus icon a few times. And as you do that, you'll notice the size of the, uh, the offset of the X increases. So I'm going to increase that a little more. I want to make it about that big right there because that... That's the, that's the space that I want to use between the E and the X right there. So I'm going to make a mental note of the offset you're using here, 2.1, because that's going to be the same size we use for the rest of these letters to make sure everything is consistent. So what I want to do now is use this green object to subtract from this letter E, but I only want to use the bottom portion of it. I don't want this green X to be cutting off the top of the E up here. So I'm going to grab the Bezier pen over here. You just press B on the keyboard to grab that, and I'm going to manually draw a selection going around that lower left leg of the X. Grab the Select tool, hold Shift, click on the green X and go to Path, Intersection, and then I'll hold Shift and click on the letter E and then go to Path, Difference. And as you can see, we've cut off a portion of that letter E there so it looks like the X is overlapping it. And now I want to do the same thing over here. I want the X to be overlapping the letter A. I'm going to take this letter X Control D to duplicate that and make that green. Give this another offset path effect. And again, I want to use the same size for the offset, 
There we go. And for this one, I don't have to, I don't have to subtract, I don't have to exclude this area like we did for the other letter. So I'm just gonna hold shift and click on the letter A and go to path difference. And there you go. Now the X is overlapping the letter A. So I'm gonna do the same thing with the letter A to the letter C. Take that, control D to duplicate it, turn that green, give that an offset path effect, make this 2.1. There we go. And I might take this letter C and just move this a little closer because as you can see, where the, the, the uh, green shape and the C intersect. It's not that much of a sample size. So I'm just gonna move that over a tiny bit like that. Again, holding control so it locks it onto the horizontal axis. Hold shift, select both, path, difference. Take the letter T, I'm gonna move this just a little closer like that. I'm gonna take the letter C, duplicate that by pressing control D. I'm gonna make this green, add another path effect, offset, 2.1. And again, I'm gonna zoom in on this right here. If you notice, the top part of the T is sticking out from this green area, so I just want to move that in a little bit like that. There we go, I want the entirety of that top part of the letter to be within that green space. Hold Shift, click on the green object, Path, Difference. And now if we zoom out, what I can do now is let me close out of the Path Effects window, we're done with that. I'm gonna take all of these objects, or these letters rather, bring the uh, opacity all the way up to 100%. And there you go, as you can see, we have created a nice custom text effect for uh, our example text here using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below. And as always, thanks for watching.